Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello and welcome to This Date in History, a.k.a. TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by other historians, but mainly things we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the Smart Device application, Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on thisday.com. For links to those sources, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar of the description below. Anyway, I am A.O. Xander, and you are you. Today is... What is today? Wednesday, Woden's Day, a.k.a. Odin's Day, a.k.a. Wednesday, March 1st, 2023. All right, let's jump into the history today, shall we? And, uh, and uh, happy March. So, we have, uh, starting us off in 752 B.C., Romulus, the first king of Rome, celebrated the first Roman triumph after his victory over the Canaanites following the rape of the Sabine women. Ugh. I wish I didn't read that. Um, that sounds awful. So, wow. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I guess I'm a minute into the show, so, uh, yeah, the auto sensors are not going to come after me. Roman Empire, history in 317. Doing one pretty good time jump there. Crispus and Constantine the Second, sons of Roman Emperor Constantine the First, and Link, uh, Licinius, the younger son of Emperor Licinius, raised to the rank of Caesar. All right, so all of those guys were raised to the rank of Caesar. Interesting. And we got a historic publication in 1516. Printing was completed on Erasmus's Novum Instrumentum, or, or Instrumentum, yeah, uh, Omni, the first published New Testament in Greek. All right. We got Drake's plunder occurred on the state in 1579 in which British Admiral and Explorer Francis Drake surprised and captured the Spanish treasure ship Nuestra Señora de la Concepción off the coast of Peru, Drake's richest plunder. All right, so uh, Señorita Concepción, something about conceiving something, I think, as a child. 1591, Pope Gregory XIV threatened to excommunicate French King Henry uh, IV. Hmm, all right. I think I remember uh, King, uh, Henry IV did something yesterday that I was completely in approval of, so that's probably why they're getting excommunicated, or getting the threat at least. Going to jump on up to 1628. Writs were issued in February by Charles I of England, mandating that every uh, county in England, not just seaport towns, pay ship tax by this date. How are they going to pay a ship tax if they have no ships? That's ridiculous. Like... What is with Europeans and taxes? You know, window taxes and all that crap. Which, you know, go check out window... Uh, go look up window taxes. If you've ever been to Europe, you know, or anybody in Europe, if you've ever seen, like, you know, the old buildings with the windows bricked up, that's because way back in the day, they had... They literally taxed you based off of how many windows you had in your building. So people bricked up their windows to reduce the tax. Isn't that insane? Anyway, 1633, Samuel de Champlain reclaimed his role as commander of New France on behalf of Cardinal Richelieu. Okay. And then, uh, let's see, 1642, I don't know why this is not highlighted. This is uh, really interesting. Uh, Georgiania, or York in Maine, became the first incorporated American city. Wow. All the way in 1642. Uh, and it's still, it's still around, right? York in Maine. So let's uh, see here. York, Maine. Huh. All right. Maps. Let's take a look at the map here. Ah. So this has been around for over for uh, almost 300 years. That is actually no over 300 years. Wow. That's uh that's interesting. It's so small. So. Anyway, we got the Salem witch trials in uh, 1692. Sarah Good, Sarah Osborne, and Tituba were arrested for witchcraft in Salem, Massachusetts. Eh, not good. The Spectator, 1711. Richard Steele and Joseph Addison published the first edition of The Spectator in London to enliven morality with wit and to temper wit with morality. Yeah, I like that. That sounds interesting. The Spectator. Articles of Confederation, 1781. Continental Congress officially adopted the Articles of Confederation, the first constitution of the United States of America after ratification by the 13th state, Maryland. All right. And we got a, the Reform Bill, 1831. Lord John Russell introduced the Reform Bill in the British House of Commons on the government's behalf to revamp the electoral system of England and Wales and increase the franchise. All right. Annexation of Texas, 1845. U.S. President John Tyler signed a resolution annexing the Republic of Texas. 
All right, yeah, and that, uh, this is during the Alamo. So, because um, the Alamo started a few days ago. You know, the anniversary, at least. War of the Triple Alliance, 1866. Paraguayan canoes sunk two Brazilian ironclads and the Rio Piranha. Oh, that's embarrassing. You got, you know, ironclads taken out by canoes? Like, <laughs> that's not how it works in civilization. 1870, War of the Triple Alliance finally ended with the Battle of Cerro Corda and the death of Paraguayan dictator Francisco Solano Lopez and over five years of uh, bloodshed between Paraguay and Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay. Dang. So, uh, four years to the date. So, um, actually, no. Well, I don't know when the War of the Triple Alliance started, uh, but two things happened on this date in that war, four years apart. So that's interesting. We got Sherlock Holmes in 1890, the first, U edition, uh, the first U.S. edition of Sherlock Holmes' first story, A Study in Scarlet, by Arthur Conan Doyle, was published. All right, so now people who can actually, you know, read it in English can read it. Got the Battle of Adwa in 1896, 80,000 Ethiopians destroyed 20,000 Italians in Ethiopia, killing two generals and capturing a third, General Matteo Albertone. Wow. Yeah, don't mess with Ethiopia, man, you know? Radioactivity discovered on this date in 1896 by Henry Bakurello. He discovered radioactivity. So, oh, wow. Uh, too bad uh, the Curies, you know, didn't uh, look more into that. Admiral Beatty, 1913. David Beatty became Rear Admiral, commanding the Royal Navy's first battlecruiser squadron. And this is the guy who's famous for, you know, tilting his cap a little bit. Then we got another historic event in 1920, 1927. The Bank of Italy, later the Bank of America, became a U.S. national bank. Yep, uh, you know, after um, after the uh, the earthquake and fire and all that stuff in San Francisco, back then they were the Bank of Italy. They just slapped a different name on there immediately, started handing out loans because everybody's like, oh, it's the Bank of America, they'll save us. You know, it's all about, you know, mind manipulation, you know. Uh, the peace of the the illusion of peace of mind and all that stuff and what you're investing into. Anyway, one year later, 1928, Paul Whitman and his orchestra recorded "Old Man River" for Victor Records, featuring Bing Crosby. Yep, "Old Man River." That's what uh, Clark Griswold sang when they were uh, going over uh, the Mississippi. The old miss, the old man. The Old Man River, <laughs> 1932. The Lindbergh kidnapping, 20-month-old son of Charles and Ann Lindbergh, was kidnapped from home in East Amwell, New Jersey, found dead on the 12th of May. So a uh, month and change later, Jennifer, March, April, May, several months later, actually. And actually, I was watching something not too long ago about this on TV. There's several theories, including uh, Charles Lindbergh uh, being the killer himself, though accidental. Um, there was an instance where uh, he had taken the baby out of its crib and hid it somewhere uh, a week before uh, the child went uh, missing. And after they found the body, they saw that it had suffered a, um, a lethal blow to the skull. And they believe uh, that uh, Charles Lindbergh had once again been trying to take the baby out of the crib. He was going out the window through a ladder and he might have dropped the child and then just, you know. Uh, Lindbergh was not a good person. Like, he was a Nazi sympathizer, and uh, he he uh, visited uh, certain people in Germany. You know, keep in mind of the year, 1930s, you know. So, he's not a good person. So, uh, I su am a subscriber to the belief that he killed his own child. Anyway, 1934, Italian boxer Primo Canara defeated U.S. challenger Tommy Longgren by unanimous points decision at Madison Square Garden, New York City, for the NYSAC and NBA heavyweight titles. He looks like a very wide man. I don't want to. I don't want to get into a ring with him. He'll probably kill me. Captain America, 1941. Captain America was created by cartoonists Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. First published by Timely Comics. Premiere issue related. Uh, released on December 20th, 1940. Has nothing to do with uh, with um, Stanley. Nothing to do with Marvel. Okay. You know, like, Captain America, one of the very few Marvel Cinematic Universe superheroes, not a direct ripoff from DC, was not even invented by Marvel. Alright? Marvel is crap. 1941, Himmler inspected Auschwitz concentration camp. Ah, that, yeah. 
Got another historic event, 1942. Tito established second uh, proletariat brigade in Bosnia. Hmm. I've heard that name, Tito. Um, I think for good reasons, I don't know. He doesn't look like a good guy, but... Uh, Anyway, 1945, U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt announced success of Yalta Conference. Yeah, and uh, I was taking a, um, I, you know, well, the other day, uh, Dad found a quiz uh, on the phone about um, uh, World War II, and uh, I did pretty good. Um, and then I took some quizzes uh, from uh, about World War II, World War One, and the Vietnam War uh, with Alice. And, uh, yeah, like, the Yalta Conference is uh, about... I didn't know this, um, I, I, well, I did and I didn't at the same time, but, like, uh, the Yalta Conference was about how to divide up Germany after the war, so. 1947, Cleveland Indians owner Bill Veek set up spring training camp in radically tolerant Phoenix, or racially, uh, racially tolerant Phoenix, Arizona, in anticipation of signing team's first black players. Larry Dobby was the first acquisition later in the season. All right. Wow. Phoenix, um, good place. Although it's very hot. 1949, former world heavyweight boxing champion Joe Lewis retired with a 66 to 3 to pardon me, 66 to 3 to 0 record, including 52 knockouts. Defended the title for a record 25 times. Dang. We got another historic event. 1950, Chiang Kai-shek resumed the presidency of National China on Taiwan. Yep, the real China. 1950 as well, Klaus Fuchs was sentenced in London to 14 years for atomic espionage. And we should have killed him. But instead we allowed him to go. So, Got some film and TV history. 1953, after an all-night movie and dinner session with his top advisors, Joseph Stalin suffered a stroke and collapsed. He died four days later. Ah, you know what? We gotta watch The Death of Stalin. Um, either tonight or tomorrow or something. I don't know. But... Uh, we got a golf tournament in 1953 as well. U.S. golfer Babe Zaharis won a controversial Sarasota Women's Open by seven strokes as playing partner Louis Suggs refused to sign the scorecard after the Zaharis was given a beneficial ruling. Oh, that's not cool. Let's move on up here. Got some sport, more sports history. 1954, future baseball Hall of Fame outfielder Ted Williams fractured his collarbone on the first day of the Boston Red Sox spring training. Injury kept him out of Boston lineup until May 15th. Wow, that sucks. Oh, Castle Bravo. 1954, U.S. exploded Castle Bravo, a 15 megaton hydrogen bomb at Bikini Atoll, which accidentally became the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated by the U.S. Yeah, it was an accident. Uh, like, they, they, somebody didn't measure something, or they didn't put into consideration some, something in, in the equation, uh, so it, the explosion was far bigger, and, uh, radiation leaked far more than they thought, so, or so they say. Got another historic event in 1961, U.S. President John F. Kennedy established the Peace Corps. Huh. All right. Got a music premiere in 1968. Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice's musical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat was first performed as a 15-minute pop cantata at Colette's Court School in London. Huh. Cantata. What's a cantata? Cantata. Uh, originally a musical composition intended to be sung as opposed to a sonata, a, a, mu uh, a composition played instrumentally. Now, loosely, any work uh, for voices and instruments. Okay. And we got some more music history. 1969, Jim Morrison allegedly exposed himself on stage at the di Diner uh, Key Auditorium in Miami. Dinner? Diner? Dinner. Key, uh, Florida. All right. Well, that's not good. Jim Morrison. You know, cover up, bro. While that was going on in 1969 as well, New York Yankees legend Mickey Mantle announced his retirement due to persistent knee injuries, finished 18-season career with 536 home runs and .298 batting average. Okay. Got a National Hockey League record that same year, 1969, double as well. Phil Esposito had a goal and assist in Boston Bruins' 8-5 win over New York Rangers to give him 99 points for the season, breaking the NHL record for most points in a season, which is 97, held by Stan Makita. All right. 
Esposito. 1970, Boston's Bobby Orr became the first defenseman in NHL history to score 25 goals in the season during a 3-1 Bruins win over the visiting St. Louis Blues. All right. Oh. Uh, Charles Manson's album Lie was released on this date in 1970. I didn't know he, was, he had an album. What the hell? Huh. Got another album released in Pink Floyd in 1973. They released their album Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, Sense has sold over 45 million copies. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Guinness shirt. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good album. I've, you know, one of the few things I've actually listened to. 1974, George Harrison announced his concert tour of U.S. in November. All right. And I see that we have been joined by someone. MTM, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you today? How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Very well, very well. Good, good. So we're going to move on up to 1976. By the way, if you'd like to take any uh, any articles, feel free to speak up. Sure. Uh, uh, 1976, 11th Academy of Country Music Awards, Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn won. And I only know Conway Twitty from Family Guy. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Conway Twitty. <laughs> 1976, we got the PGA Tournament Players Championship in Inverry Country Club. Jack Nicklaus won his second TPC title, three strokes ahead of runner-up J.C. Sneed. That's a decent lead, three strokes. So, I mean, like, right, is three strokes a lot? That depends on the context. In golf, yeah, yeah, really. In golf, <laughs> no. Uh, in the medical field, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, bringing, uh, bringing Charlie a, a meme to life. Uh, Charlie Chaplin's coffin and remains are stolen from a Swiss cemetery in an extortion plot. What oh. the hell? <laughs> yeah, this guy has a very bizarre history. He's actually the, um, has the, I think he has the world record for oldest man to have children. Hold on. Just, yeah, I think he had a. Uh, he had children with a 19-year-old when he was... Oh, okay. 94, never mind. Uh, yeah, well, well, this is in 2012. Actually, in 2010. Oh, in 20... so, 2010? Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you may be time, right, yeah. but the record has since been broken. He was 79, and he had kids with, like, a 18-year-old, uh, 19-year-old. That is disgusting. <laughs> but then again, you know, I, I guess he really did set the stage for Hollywood. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he has a lot of controversial history. Very interesting guy. He got... Um, he was banned from the country from being a for being a pacifist during World War One. Yeah, I remember that. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I can see why someone would want to steal his remains for an extortion plot. Good lord, that's ridiculous. Oh good, goodness gracious, yeah. Yeah. What else we got here? Duke Ellington's musical *Sophisticated Ladies* opens at Lunt Fontaine, New York City, and runs for 767 performances. Wow. That's pretty good. What year was that though? 1981. Huh. All right. Hey, oh, got some more music history here. 1985, Liza Minnelli enters Betty Ford Drug Center. Ah. All right. Yeah, of course, rehab is always uh, yeah. always the excuse to get out of uh, serving jail time. Let's give you another sizable one just to hear, hear your voice right. a little bit longer. In 1986, <laughs> Quebec's Peter Stontzny... I believe that's how it's pronounced. I don't have a, a lot idea. of accent marks there, yeah. Becomes just the second player in National Hockey League history to score 100 points in each of the first six seasons, with an assist in an 8-4 to Nordics loss to the visiting Buffalo Sabres. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. So he's like, in 1986, he's the second one to score 100 points in, in each of his first six seasons. That's That's very impressive. Never heard of him though. And yeah, like he has he has marks that I never have seen before. Like, well, I've seen a lot of these marks, but like I don't know what they what they do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, going uh, from one hockey great to another, we got some more sports history in 1988. Edmonton's Wayne Gretzky picked up a first period assistant Oilers five to three win over the L.A. Kings to move ahead of Gordy Howe as NHL's all-time leader in career assists. Howe 1,049 assists in 26 years. Gretzky 1,050 assists in nine years. Yeah, I know him because uh, he's one of Bubbles' favorite players. Bubbles from uh, Trailer Park Boys is always talking about him. Wayne Gretzky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, aren't From they, the isn't Trailer Park Boys uh, in Canada? 
Yeah, they are, so they're yeah. big hockey fans, yeah. Uh -huh. We got the Hall of Fame in 1988 for the first time in, uh, since 1956, so 32 years. The Special Veterans Committee do does not elect anyone to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Phil Rizzuto, Leo Dorisher, Joe Gordon, and Gil Hodge was were passed over. Whoa, what happened? Huh. Something big happened. Like, maybe a whole scandal, or I don't know, I wasn't around. So, I present this as a... Um, as a uh, challenge to the audience, why did this happen? What happened in 1988 that caused all these great, you know, players to be just skipped over? I mean, what the hell? Anyway, we got some more sports history. In 1991, 37-year-old Pat Day became the sixth jockey in history whose mounts earned $100 million when he rode Wild Sierra to second place in the first race at Oaklawn Park in Arkansas. Wow. $100 million. You know, like uh, that that one uh, I I don't remember Randy Newman that one Randy Newman song. Short people got no reason to live. I yeah. think one hundred million dollars is a pretty big reason to live. You know, yeah, you gotta definitely. be short to be a jockey. So, <laughs> yeah. And I think it's back to you. You got some more sports history here. Nineteen ninety three. More sports history. Nineteen ninety three. The New York Yankees owner George Steinbrenner is reinstated as the general partner of the team. Banned because of his relationship with convicted gambler Howie Spira. Yep. Every time I see that picture. For... What? Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, like, what? every time I see that picture, like, it's almost like he's reacting to it. He's like, I was caught. <gasps> yeah. I didn't know you could get convicted for gambling. Man. Oh, yeah. No, like, um, uh, sports betting. If you're doing maybe illegal gam like illegal sports gambling, yeah. Well, no, 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 not even illegal. If you're in the business of sports, like if you're a player, if you're a manager, you know, oh, if you know, yeah. you're betting for or against your team, you can have the power to throw the game or rake, you know? So that's a huge no-no. Uh, there's been several people. There's this one guy, I don't remember who it was, uh, but he was banned for life. Uh, and because he kept betting, like like he was, he, he kept getting caught, he kept getting caught, no and then they're just like, okay, you're done, you know, three strikes, you're out, you know, so. But anyway, let's move on up. We got some more sports history here. Wow, today's a sports day, it seems. Big day for sports. The 1993 Pavel Bure, Bure or Burr? Bure. Or is, yeah, Bure scores twice to become the first player in Vancouver's 23-year history to record 50 goals in National Hockey League season as Canucks beat the Buffalo Sabres in a 5-2 Hamilton. Wow. So it took 23 years to uh, for one guy to get uh, 50 goals in a season. I mean, getting a goal is difficult, so... And I don't know how long a season is, how many games there are. Well, it really depends on, like, you know, how good you do as a team, you know? So. True. Hey, finally getting out of sports. The 1994 36 Grammy Awards. I Will Always Love You, Whitney Houston, Sting, Tony Braxton, and Mary Chaplin Carpenter win. Dang, that's a lot of winners. Normally it's only, like, you know, a song and one or two people. But this is a song, three people, and and a band. Wait. Wait, no, is Sting a band or a guy? Uh, he's he's the lead singer of the Police, I believe. Oh, okay, that, so he's a guy. Police. So, oh, right. but he but he's he's mostly a solo uh, performer these days. But I he always got thought famous Sting for having band. that band. Yeah. Yeah. Same with uh, Christina Aguilera. You know, she used to have um, she used to be in No Doubt as the lead singer, and then she went on to be her own thing, right? Oh, No Doubt. Yeah. I was doing a double play on words there, like you know. <laughs> In 1995, the 37th Grammy Awards, All I Want to Do by Sheryl Crow, Streets of Philadelphia, and by Bruce Springsteen win. All I want to do is have some fun. Yeah, that, that song. Yeah. That's what that song is. 1996, Atlanta's Lenny Wilkins became the first coach in NBA history to reach 1,000 career victories when the Hawks defeated Cleveland Cavaliers 74-68. to Nice. Yeah. Lenny Wilkins, you know, I, I have the same expression, the first to reach a thousand. Woo! <laughs> we got some more sports history. Wow, dude, like right back into sports. 
1997 Puerto Rican boxer Hector Camacho stopped Sugar Ray Leonard in fifth round in Atlantic City, New Jersey, to retain IBC middleweight title, the only time Leonard was knocked out and sent him into permanent retirement. Wow. So Leonard just got... Leonard got his, uh... His... His, uh... His rice fried. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, these... These, well, these high-demand sports, uh, people get knocked out and they go, wow, that was really intense, and then sometimes they don't want to compete anymore. Or they get, like, severe, um, you know, brain trauma or body trauma that prevents them from um, being able to compete again. Or, you know. Yeah. And sometimes it's like a power of belief thing. Like, you, you get knocked out once and you're just like, damn, I, just, I got knocked out. I, I can't do it again, you know. Yeah, well, as the song goes, I get knocked down, but I get up again. <laughs> And then they're gonna keep me down. <laughs> 1998, Yasmina Reza's French stage comedy Art, starring Alan Alda, Victor Garber, and Alfred Molina, opens at the Royale Theater, in New York City, and runs for 600 performances. All right. So it looks like uh, the Spartans visited them twice. <laughs> Ooh, Soul Train. Anything else interested in, in here? Um. Little minor interesting thing that the Constitution of Finland got written in 2000. Ah, interesting. Ooh, rewritten, okay. Little, rewritten, yeah. Little challenge to the viewers to find that. Mm -hmm. Rewritten Constitution, why yep. they rewrote it. 2003, the 17th Soul Train Music Awards, LL Cool J, Mariah Carey, and Nelly win. I remember Nelly. Nelly Furtado? Oh wait, that's that's the rapper. No, Never that's mind. a different Nelly. It's different a it's Nelly. a rapper. He just he just goes by Nelly. Yeah. That's an interesting name. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. Ooh. We have a murder of interest. Two thousand four. A murder of interest in two thousand four. <laughs> Terry Nichols is convicted of state murder charges and being an accomplice to the Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh. Wow. Ah. All right. I remember that bombing. Oh. Yeah, crazy. 2006, the animated film Ice Age, The Meltdown, directed by Carlos Salda, with voices Ray Romano and John Leguizamo, premieres in Belgium. I'm Ray Romano. I voiced an, uh, a mammoth no, named Manny. Oh, uh, John Leguizamo is, is the sloth, isn't he? Huh? Oh, he's Sid. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That... The, Man, the, I, I totally see it now, yeah. The sloth with no upper lip. <laughs> Yeah. We got a historic event in 2014. U.S. President Barack Obunga won, uh, warned Russian President Vladimir Putin over involvement in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> Foreshadowing, yikers. Man. Seven That's years scary. later. Holy shit. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah. You, uh, you skipped over an interesting thing here. In 2011... Tomb uh, of a 700-year-old female mummy discovered by road workers was opened in Taozhou, Zhengzhou, China. Wow. Yeah, there are there are really really fascinating. There are pyramids in China, which oh. may house mummies that the Chinese government prevents people from investigating. Well, if you're talking about the first uh, tomb. Um... Like, they believe that there's... Well, they have discovered higher levels of, like, you know, some kind of chemical associated with mercury, so they believe... Oh, yeah. They believe that the, uh... That the, um... The saying that uh, it's surrounded by a, a uh, ocean of mercury or a river of mercury or something uh, would be true. So... Oh, okay. So you need some kind of protective gear or a nice vacuum to vacuum up all that mercury. <laughs> yeah. You can make a lot of thermometers with that, though. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised China hasn't tapped into that, honestly, thinking about that. Like, you know, you'd think they'd be the last people to, to have, you know, to care about anything sacred. Well, so. maybe Xi Jinping is a fan of the show. He'll, he'll catch on. <laughs> he'll if Xi Jinping is a fan of the show, I'd be very concerned. Like, I don't want him involved in the show. Like, I don't want the government to come in down. Yeah, we noticed that the uh, Supreme Leader of China enjoys your show. What? Like, please, <laughs> please tell me you're lying. Like, don't, I don't want to be associated with that man. <laughs> 2016 Forbes richest list released Bill Gates number one with 75 billion number of the world's billionaires shrinks to 1810 uh, I, I have nothing good to say about Bill Gates 
So. Oh, in 2016, this is interesting. In 2016, the gene for gray hair, titled IRF4, discovery announced by scientists from the University of College London in Nature Communications. That's really interesting. Huh. Uh, gene for gray hair. There, yeah, there's a gene for gray hair, and there's a gene for white hair, and there's a gene for balding, and there's also a gene for dark red hair. You ever see that? Some men will, as they age, get um, dark red hairs in the middle of their beard. You ever seen that before? Dude, that happens to me. I have dark red hairs in my beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, but you know, I, I am descended from a ginger, uh, so um, I, I, I don't, oh, have, be, I don't yeah. have all of my soul. So, um, but uh, I always thought, you know, gray and white was like lack of nutrients or something like you know getting to the follicles and it it like you know being another color i didn't know it was genetic yeah yeah huh interesting well speaking of uh, people going gray <laughs> <laughs> yeah the 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 orange tan is failing yeah. uh in 2016 u.s primary elections super tuesday both republican donald trump and democratic candidate hillary clinton win seven state races each huh I wasn't talking about the spray tan, I was talking about the exposed roots on the other camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we got some film and t TV history in 2017. Charo was revealed as a contestant on the season 24 of Dancing with the Stars. Uh, she looks, I don't know uh, who Charo is. I don't know either. I mean, I don't want to rag on her, but, uh, you know, like, she should probably retire. So, um... And we got another historic event in 2018. U.S. President Donald Trump said he will impose 25% steel, 10% aluminum import tariffs, raising fears of a trade war. Oh, come on. Wasn't raising any fears of a trade war. He's just trying to get money back into our coffers. He's a businessman doing business. I'm not supporting him. I'm the last person to support Trump or Hillary. I don't like either of them. But, you know, to, 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 to utilize anybody's action to go after them for everything is a little ridiculous so uh then uh why don't you take these last two here all righty in 2022 the dc film the batman starring robert pattinson and zoe kravitz directed and written by matt reeves premieres in new york that's and a good movie have you seen it no i haven't seen the new batman i guess oh it's it's really good yeah i've seen it twice actually so i didn't realize 20... it's, only, it's already been a year wow yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 2022 U.S. President Joe Biden says Vladimir Putin has badly miscalculated by invading Ukraine in his State of the Union address. Oh. And here we are, you know, one over one year later, and uh, we're no closer to victory. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, before we move on to the burst of this audience, were there any articles that grabbed your attention more than most? Anything you wish we had elaborated more about? Anything you would have liked to say had you been here? Start a dialogue in the comments section. <coughs> Pardon me. Do you want to start us off in burst in the year 40? The year 40. The 40th year. Mm -hmm. Maritao, a Latin poet di uh, who died in the year 102, so yep. about 62 years old there. Yeah. It's a pretty good life expectancy considering it's year 40. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that you know like uh, we've spoken about this uh, the other day like there was somebody like in the 1300s or whatever he lived up to the age of like 70 or something. It's like holy crap, dude. Yeah, that's that's like living up to 120 or 110 in in current today's year. world, which people are, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you have the right uh diet, yeah. Yep. Polish pianist and composer Friedrich Chopin, who wrote the concerto in F minor, was born in Zewolzola Wola, Duchy of Warsaw. Huh. And he only lived, yeah, he only lived 39 years. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, 39. Died of tuberculosis. Hmm. Oh. And who else was born today? There we go. Bit of Glenn a... Miller. Yeah. American band leader and jazz composer Glenn Miller, orchestra In the Mood, Moonlight, Serenade, and String of Pearls, was born in Clarinda, Iowa, huh. 1904 to 1944. Wow, huh. another 
Was he 40 years What's or 39? What's this cause of death? 40. A probable plane crash over the English Channel. Yikers. Oh. Yeah. We also have Archer John Porter Martin, born on the state in 1910, was an English chemist and Nobel laureate, born in London, and he died in 2002. And the same day, 1910, David Neven was born. He was a British actor, Casino Royale, and the Pink Panther. Oh, I guess he played Inspector Crusoe or whatever the name was. Yeah, he must be. He's got the mustache for it. Yeah. And, uh, born in London, England, and he died in 1983. Rest in peace. And uh, Dinesh Shore, 1917, a U.S. singer, see the USA in a Chevrolet. That sounds pretty cool. Actress and a TV personality, Dina Shore Show, Nabisco DS Championship, born in Winchester, Tennessee. Died in 1994. Ah. Oh, good luck pronouncing this name. Yitzk Rabin. <laughs> <laughs> the Prime Minister of Israel from 1974 to 1977 and 1992 to 1995, so he was re elected, was born uh, 1922, and he also won the 1994 Nobel Prize, uh, and he was born in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yep. Hmm. I suppose you'd have to be native born to be prime minister of a country, right? Uh, well, that's usually how it works. Uh, yeah. But, uh, well, Canada has different rules because they still, they, they're, they're technically independent, but they still answer to the crown. Um, so oh, like, there yeah. have been instances like where I've read things like, you know, in, uh, in various countries in Africa, in, uh, Canada, you know, in, um, in, um, Australia, you know, and there's other examples where non-native people, you know, were always a leader, and then it's like, oh, this is the first, you know, like, first uh, first person born in Kenya to become, you know, uh, president of Kenya, like, you know, a hundred years after Kenya was founded. It's like, wow, what a concept, huh? You know? <laughs> yeah. And then I go on, like, you know, a little rant about, like, when are we going to have a Native American president, you know? Like... <laughs> So we're yeah. we're behind the curve of uh, you know against Zimbabwe, so that's that's kind of pathetic. <laughs> How <laughs> yeah. long before we have a native man president? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I just got it! Wow. <laughs> oh. oh goodness, goodness me. Anyway, uh, I think it's your turn. Nineteen twenty-six here. Peter Roselli, 1926 to 1996, was an American football executive, the NFL commissioner from 1960 to 1989, born in Southgate, California. Huh. All right. And Harry Belafonte, it's 96 birthdays today. Wow. It was, it was 1927. He's a junior, apparently. Yeah. Jamaican-American Calypso singer of the Banana Boat song. Oh. And, actor of Buck and Preacher and a human rights activist who was born in Harlem, New York. Wow. You know uh, the Banana Boat song? I would have to <laughs> hey look it up. Hey oh, it's a day oh, daylight come and I wanna go home That's the Six Banana Boat song. Six man, seven man, day da, da, da. daylight come and me one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Home. Yeah, that's the Banana yeah. Boat song. All right. It's a classic. Here we go. It's a little bit of a scroll, but there's somebody here in 1944. Roger Daltrey, 79th birthday is today. 1944, English singer and founder of the rock band The Who, born in East Acton, London, England. The Who? Yeah, my parents used to do that to me. The Who? <laughs> when I found out about them, yeah, they'd be like, The Who? The Who? Yeah. What's yeah, well, like, I really wish they'd tell us to stop, you know, wearing masks, so. Oh, wait, that's the World Health Organization. That's a different who. So, <laughs> that's the why. <laughs> like, like, as in, why do they exist? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, here Russell we go. Ka Russell, you want to take this one? Russell no, Cowles, 61st birthday. 61st birthday, excuse me. 1962, New, e New Zealand yachtsman, Olympic... Gold Finn class, 1984, America's Cup, five-time winner, and born in Wellington, New Zealand. Huh. All right. What does it say on the shirt? Oracle? And then there's a BMW logo right there. Yeah, he's got sponsorships. Yeah. 
We also have uh, Jensen Ackley's 1978, a U.S. actor, Days of Our Lives, The Supernatural, born in Dallas, Texas. He's 45 today. Never heard of him. Never seen any of those. Although I've heard of them both. Uh, wait, that's yeah, they that's a drama shows. Is he? He? I forget if he plays Barry or Superman or or Kent or Clark. Uh, sorry. Well, Superman, Kent, and Clark are the same person. Barry Allen and the Flash are Clark, the same yeah. person. Barry Allen, yeah. I yeah. think it, it might be Barry Allen. Uh, Jensen Ackles, Supernatural. Let's see here. Ackles, Supernatural. Uh, let's see. Images. Uh, I think Superman, maybe. I'm not seeing anything. Character. Um... Alright, well, yeah. I'm going to say Superman. You probably have because... to check IDMDB uh, to, for it to tell you. Well, there's a Superman here. So unless he's playing oh, yeah, this other he character, is. then I yeah. have to, you know. Anyway, uh, who else was born on this date? We have Kesha, 1987, a U.S. pop singer, TikTok. Born in Los Angeles, California. Not not to be confused ah. with the uh, Chinese TikTok, the app now. Not to now. be confused with Chinese TikTok. Yeah, the the song from several years ago. TikTok on the spot. Da 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 da. da however, the song goes. So that's, that's <laughs> I can't old. remember it either. Dude, I, I saw part... I, I I saw a meme once involving like a time traveler goes back in time. He's like, what year is it? Uh, like, uh, what does TikTok mean to you? Is it a song or is it an app? <laughs> <laughs> Song, it was 2010. Oh, oh, God. Justin 1994, Bieber. a Canadian <laughs> pop singer and uh, mop bucket wizard and musician ba of Baby, sorry, and what do you mean? Justin Bieber's 29th birthday. He was born in London, <laughs> Ontario. I can't look at him. <laughs> Gross. Oh, that he does look kind of weird shit. now, yeah. Well, no, like, like he's, a, he's a hypocritical piece of crap. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because he got his fame from singing covers on YouTube, and then after he got famous, he turned around and advocated against doing that. You know. Against just, doing that? Really? Yeah. Wow, I need to. Yeah, no, I he sided with Sopa and Pippa. Now. He was trying to uh, to get, like, all the copyright. Like, he, he was, like, one of the, you know, larger backers behind what inevitably caused YouTube to be, to be the way it is today with all the copyright crap. Like, he's one of the reasons. And he used his fame and power and influence to push it. So, you know, he's a piece of shit. I don't care what he does for the rest of his life. You know, unless he there does something against that and gets it repealed, he will forever be a piece of garbage. There is that other guy. Um, I should show you that. I should show you that video. It's very interesting. This guy, um, Matt something or other, this red-haired guy. I can't remember his last name, but Ed he... Is, is that his... I can't remember his last name, but... He, um, a bunch of people suspect that he was like a plant or, or some kind of like YouTube operative that, uh, set up this whole social, um, experiment to actually end up getting the copyright laws stricter. It's very bizarre. I'd like to go um, down that rabbit hole, uh, after the show. That sounds yeah, of interesting. So. I will set it, I will send it to you so you can put it in the description. Thank you. Thank you. Um, St. David... Patron of Patron Saint of Wales dies at ninety in five eighty nine. Yeah, we are now in death and uh, patron saint of Wales died at around the age patron of ninety. Saint of Wales. Yeah. Patron, yeah, he's an alcoholic beverage. <laughs> <laughs> that is that uh, is loved by uh, Supreme Leader Kim Jong un. <laughs> Wait, no, that's yeah. Hennessy, not Patron, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Leopold the second. 1774 to 1792, the Grand Duke of Tuscany from 1765 to 1790, and Holy Roman Emperor from 1790 to 92, dies at 44. Wow. A Holy Roman Emperor with that hairstyle. I mean, I guess that was the time, the style back then, so... Interesting. I, I wonder yes. when the Holy Roman Emperor, Empire turned into the Ottoman Empire. Cause, Good question. Yeah, because, you know, like, that is the same thing. And then that eventually became Turkey that we know today. You know, Istanbul used to be Constantinople, the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. So. I could I could find the date of that yeah. um, after this. Francisco Solano Lopez, 
1826 to 1870, excuse me. President and dictator of Paraguay from 1862 to 1870 shouts, Muero con mi partia. I die with my nation, and dies in a struggle with Brazilian soldiers attempting to disarm him at 43. You know, that is really interesting. I saw that um, the beginning of the, his date of ruling, you know, as uh, the president and dictator of Paraguay, mm -hmm. the last two digits are just swapped from his birth year. Oh. That's wow. weird. That's bizarre, and and uh, to think that that was the the year the Civil War was going on in America. Yes, you're right. Wow. Hmm. All Very right. interesting context there. Yeah. Yeah. Who else died today? Bada 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 bada. We have Jackie Coogan. Oh, Fester. Uh, died on the state in 1984. Was a U.S. actor. He played Uncle Fester in Adam's Family. He was also in The Kid and Oliver Twist. Died of a heart attack at the age of 69. Uh, rest in peace, Fester. We also have Edwin Land in 1991. A U.S. inventor of instant photography and co-founder of the Polaroid Corporation. Died at the age of 81. So we can thank him for that uh, Black Eyed Peas song, Shake It Like a Polaroid Picture. Well. Yeah. Which, by the way, I, I you know I said this not too long ago, but do you know uh, the primary use of the Polaroid camera? In, uh, investigating murder scene? I don't know what. Uh, taking nudes of your significant other, because before that, oh, if you yeah. had to go get it, if you had to go get your film, you know, like uh, like developed, right? Other people, people see, see the nakeds, yeah, yeah. so you don't want that. But once the Polaroid happened, you get you know instant, you know, right there, you know. Boom. Well, you, and you could do other malicious things with the two, but I don't want to say oh, that on well, there. Blackmail, <laughs> yeah, you know, all that stuff. Anyway, uh, speaking of people who probably have done blackmail, we have Jack Welch, died on the state in 2020. He was a U.S. businessman of, and CEO of General Electric, GE. Died of renal failure at 84. I have no sympathy for him. GE is evil. So. Uh, then, uh, uh, I guess... That looks we'll, like it. What? For the... Uh, that looks just that's just just about it yeah yeah um, I'm looking uh, for in between I'm just gonna take uh, Warner Mark McPherson 2022 US country music singer songwriter sitting on a rock crying in a creek talking to the wall you got problems bro uh, died at the age of 86 um, all right why why are you sitting on a rock why are you crying in a creek and why are you talking into a wall bro like see he 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 he, need, he needed a therapy. Like th this is a cry for help. Nobody helped him. So anyway, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. For your dose of past events daily, we stream every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time, which is 11 Mountain, 12 Central, 1 PM Eastern time. For all of you and all of us, I am Aosander, and I was joined by MTM. Yep. And of course, you are you. And until you catch us tomorrow, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection. Rate five thumbs and subscribe. Toodles! <laughs>